It's something that several people have told me. And when they tell me, I know that they feel very awkward in admitting this. But for various reasons, I've, I've heard people say to me that their local church or their synagogue or their mosque or whatever their religious institution is, it's not working for them. They no longer attend. People may still pray, they may do spiritual practice, they may engage in things that nurture their inner life. But organized religion, many people find it's just not working for them. That's what I want to talk about today. And as I do, I want to invite you to subscribe to this channel as well as to click that bell so that you're notified of future videos. So I think it's important for you to know that I'm one of those people who no longer attends church. I found that it just didn't work for me. And this was a difficult decision that I made a few years ago, and I made it after I retired as a minister. You know, I spent much of my career working with congregations. There was a period of, of about 12 years where I worked looking at how to develop new congregations that were really relevant and dynamic, that were spiritually based, that would nurture people's inner life. So looking at how to do things in a different way. And then I worked revitalizing churches that were close to dying and tried to help them find new life by incorporating a spiritual outlook and a spiritual practice. I was so dedicated to this that not only did I study this, but I actually wrote a book about it, Contemporary Churches, where I tried to speak in very plain ways to church leaders on how to do something different. And what I consistently found was that people would try things for a while, but ultimately they'd go back to what was familiar, what they felt was safe. They would stay rooted in a dogma that people didn't understand rather than focusing on people's real experience and where people needed support for their life journey. So, I'm tired of talking to church leaders. I mean, I even wrote a book about it and people don't seem to want to get it. They want to do what they want to do. And in the meantime, churches are emptying. The statistics show us that. People leave for a variety of reasons. Sometimes it's been because they have experienced something abusive at church, rather from, whether it's from other church members or from the minister. There are people who are really tired of, of a political agenda attached to church. And that's been more obvious right now for those churches really focused on a pro-life agenda. And people look at that and see that, yeah, they're talking about pro-life, but they don't treat other people with respect. They don't really engender life. And so there's this disconnect. There's this disconnect about uh, Christian nationalism that drives people away. But I think most people are leaving because of boredom. They simply aren't finding anything that's working for them. And that's part of what happened for me. After I retired, I continued going to the church where I technically hold membership. But I and I'd go to some other churches to see if I could find something that was nurturing. But whether it was the church I belonged to or other churches, I consistently left feeling worse than when I went in. So I tried to attend just to have a social connection. And as I looked for a social connection, I found that people were pretty clicky and weren't very open to experiencing new people and welcoming new people even when they're saying we're a welcoming congregation. So it's just very confusing. So where do people find a connection? Sometimes they find it in a yoga group or in a meditation group. And many people find it just simply going out for a hike and enjoying nature, that that's more satisfying and nurturing for them than traditional religion. So for those of us who Church isn't just working for us anymore. What do we do? I want to talk about three things very quickly. The first is, I think community is very important for us on the spiritual journey. We need to have other people with whom we can share and, and explore what's going on in our spirit, in our inner life, 
doing that in isolation can, can be very confusing for us. And it's fine to read books and to watch YouTube, but we need other people. So find community. Maybe that community is in another church of a different denomination or something like that. Maybe it's going to be online. Maybe it's in a meditation group. Whatever it may be, try to find a way to connect with other people. Secondly, find a spiritual director, someone with whom you can share deeply. Now, there's a, a, an issue to be concerned about in this circumstance because many spiritual directors are tied to their religious tradition. And they'll be very encouraging of trying harder and going back and trying to find a way to make church work. And they'll even say things that are essentially abusive, like church isn't what you get out of it, it's what you put into it. Wow, people don't recognize that that's a really codependent message. A community of faith should be based on mutuality, where people give and receive. Whenever the dynamic is set that it's based on you giving and not receiving, something's wrong. That's abuse. That's a form of spiritual abuse. So stay away from that. If you're finding difficulty identifying a spiritual director, you can reach out to me. And if you don't want to work directly with me, that's fine. I'll help you find a spiritual director. Thirdly, you may need to look at how you can create your own community. That's really what I needed to do. There are other people who were like me, who were clergy, who I knew, who stopped and dropped out after they retired because they found that there wasn't substance there. And so we connect with each other and we share deeply about our faith and about our spiritual life and what's happening in our personal lives and how those things all fit together. So that's become our community. So you may need to find ways to form your own community. Now, in the larger picture here, part of what's happening is we're in a transition in time where institutional religion is, being, is beginning to collapse on itself. Well, it started to collapse on itself a few decades ago. But we've seen this before in history. And often what happens is that after institutional religion collapses far enough, then something new begins to reemerge. That in the case of Christianity, people find other ways to gravitate around the teachings of Jesus. I believe that will happen at some time in the future, but we're not there now. When it happens, it's going to happen from the bottom up, not from the top down. That's what we know from history. In the meantime, it's important for each of us to really nurture our inner life, our soul and our spirit, to find ways that we can live with integrity and authenticity. And part of how we do that is to live a richly spiritual life in connection with others. And it's finding that way of connecting with others that's really important for us. In that, I wish you success and, and please reach out and share comments about how you're doing that and what recommendations you may have for others. Subscribe to this channel. Thanks for your time for sh uh, watching. Share this video with others and know that I appreciate your time. Have a great day.